he's still doing it. So I wanted to share that with everybody to know this is, now it's February, 2021. It's been a lot of stuff going on, but look, George and Jackie Bryce are in Tennessee and we are developing Milwaukee 8 performance parts. We're gonna market them through all of our friends that are watching. There's a lot of big engine builders that use our stuff and we want to supply the engine builder with some really great parts so you can make the Milwaukee 8s faster. So given the time that I have now, bandwidth that I didn't have when I was trying to run the business, run the shop, run the racing team and focusing on my own motorcycle and trying to get everybody else's work done and keep people gainfully employed, it was able, it actually clogged up my ability to keep inventing and new ideas and coming up with better camshafts, better valves, better valve train components. So I want to share that with you guys that that's happening. Now, the story real quick before we change over to Tech Talk number 80, I want to tell you the story. I hope you can hear me with a guy with a leaf blower blowing next door. Um, anyway, back in, let's see when it was, we were running, 1985, uh, John Myers was riding this motorcycle, 84, and we had a friend that worked at Ford Motor Company in Detroit, and he was racing NHRA also, but he was running in a sportsman class, and I'm not going to throw him under the bus or talk about him too much, even though he is an unsung hero like Ron, but this guy had access to a piece of equipment that cost $15,000 in 1985, and it was measure air fuel ratio in the exhaust and it was uh, made by NTK and it was a box that looked like a big transformer and it had one sensor and the sensor that screwed in the exhaust pipe cost $5,000 and this box was 15,000. And there's another engine builder uh, in Indiana is named Steve Schmidt and he and I would share this thing with the guys at Ford. And my friend would ship it to me next day air. We would put it, we would have an engine on the dyno and ready to run it. And it would show the air fuel ratio with our electron carburetors. It would show if we were lean or rich. And that piece of equipment was $15,000. And it was way over our head. Look, y'all don't understand. Think about when, two, 1985, all right? That's 80, 95, 05, 15. That's 35 years ago. We had a real wideband sensor and nobody knew about it. Nobody heard about it. They weren't available. Nobody even... It was crazy. So we were at the shop one day and we were dynoing and we were testing with that part and it was so awesome to see what the air fuel ratio was carbureted, how at low RPM, when you'd floor the engine at low RPM, it would be so lean that you couldn't put enough fuel there and then the carburetor would go so rich at high RPM that we couldn't take enough fuel away to make the horsepower. So we were always working an average. So what we did was um, we kept shopping and shopping and shopping and we found a company that would sell us one sensor with one box, LED, readout from rich to lean, and it, or lean to rich, it would have yellow lights all the way to red lights, and, it, and go through and it would show you a really nice bar graph. But you couldn't look at it while you were going down the racetrack. So we were trying to figure out how to put some kind of camera on John Myers' motorcycle so we could look at the air fuel ratio. And I called my buddy, Ron Armstrong, when they were just getting going good with the race pack before they got 35 years ago, Ron Armstrong was working there. I told him what I was doing. He was really great keeping secrets. He didn't tell me what anybody else was doing and he didn't tell anybody what I was doing. And he helped me connect a conversion box to take the voltage output. This is, this is easy to do today. You buy you a new uh, Max ECU now and with Steve Nichols and you can take it, voltage outputs from any sensor and he can convert it into a graph, he can convert it into numerical data and he can show you what, live what it's doing. Well, back then this was unheard of. So he helped me put it on and put a race pack computer on the motorcycle where we could actually see a graph. And it wasn't air fuel, it was voltage. It would show two volts, three volts, four volts, five volts, going up and down the track, the volts. And then we had to take that voltage and turn it into our opinion of what an air fuel ratio based on uh, dyno information. So what was cool about that is when we figured out how to put it on the motorcycle, this box, this NTK box was, I don't know, looked like an amplifier goes in the trunk of your car for a stereo system. And we put it in the bottom of John's, we put the first bottom on the motorcycle, an aluminum pan under the bottom of the motorcycle. And then we put this under the frame rails and put an aluminum panel on top of it and put Zeus buttons on it and painted it flat black so that you couldn't see this box. And we kept diverting everybody's attention to somewhere else on the motorcycle, but we had hidden on the back side of the exhaust pipe, we had an O2 sensor back there and we told everybody it was an MSD 
O2 sensor, which it was, that's what it looked like, because you could buy the MSD when we put it on the dash and it would, it would have a red light and a green light, red, green, red, green. What that one sensor was that MSD sold was a clo um, narrow band. And all it did was say on off, on off, on off. So it would, John Myers would be going down the track and back in the day we had the first onboard camera with uh, the, the TV people and John had the camera on, you could see it on the bike and it was red, green, red, green, red, green. And it was showing air fuel, air fuel, but it wasn't showing air fuel. It was showing lean, rich, lean, rich, lean, rich. So it wasn't giving us the data we wanted. So we had to go deeper and find. And one day we were at Reading, Pennsylvania and Jim Yates came over. He had the McDonald's car, whatever year, it might've been 93, 94, 95. But I don't remember exactly what year it was, but he had the McDonald's Firebird. And we were just BSing and hanging out. And he says, what's that? And I said, Oh man, you can't tell nobody. He says, well, what is it? I said, you can't tell nobody. So he went back over to his pit and Richard Maskin was over there. So Richard comes over and he's a big burly guy. And also, you know, he's not like just a, you know, he's not a social superstar, you know, he's just a big guy that has a lot of presence. And he came over and he said, show me what you're hiding. And I said, I can't do it. It's a secret. We can't share it with anybody. And he said, well, I'll share something with you if you share that with me. And I said, I'm interested. So we started an exchange program where we worked, not worked together, that's the wrong story. But we 